We're going to try and cover code requirements today for the 2006 to the 2012 IVC because a lot of us are building under those various codes right now. I'm going to show you some resource and background material where you can find more in-depth information for these items. And then uh, the impacts you're going to have on yourselves as designers and during construction as well as what you should educate your owners on and how to deal with the and interact with the inspectors and field staff associated with your projects. Um, we'll look at permitting a little bit and construction, including the cost and what, what does special inspection really cost us. And then continuous um, versus periodic special inspections and the, what that nuance comes down to in some, some cases. And then approaches to presentation with an example preparation of uh, specs and drawings for a project uh, going through that. Um, uh, going through that item. So um, we'll go from there. Um, definitions are going to use throughout the presentation. When was the last time you've read chapter one of IVC? There's lots of good structural items related to special inspection, agencies, testing agencies, deferred submittals, and all that that relate to special inspection. So might be a good time to skim through that again. AHJ is the authority having jurisdiction. Um, Registered design professional, that's us for a lot of the people on the phone or the engineers you hire for your design services. Could be a structural engineer, an architect, a geotech, and so forth. So somebody designated in your jurisdiction as, a, as an RDP, which is similar to an engineer or architect of a record, only it's the person taking responsibility in re for the statement of special inspection plan. If you look at the RDP RC, which is your responsible charge, you're making sure that everything is, is uh, going to occur there. Um, the RDP for the Special Inspection Program is usually a structural engineer, depending on uh, how, the, how your firm or struct project uh, series of consultants is put together. There's a lot of work in this arena for the geotech to do as well, so you have to coordinate with them. And the structural engineer um, is pretty much the, the most affected by this work, so we're going to concentrate on that to some extent. So the impacts and responsibilities of the owners um, you have to coordinate with just about everybody uh, when you put one of these plans together. So the, the private consultants, the architects, uh, all if you have equipment specifications, um, of course you're going to have mechanical, electrical, INC that have anchorage and bracing that need special inspection and depending on where you're located, uh, somewhat dependent on seismic arenas. Specs, it's always good to have some specifications and I'll show you some forms and some formats that will, will not only umbrella your statement of special inspections, which is the line by line plan of what you're going to do for testing and inspection and uh, observation by the professional engineer where it's required. So it's, um, it's, it's something has got to umbrella all this. So you don't have to repeat it every time. Uh, drawing impacts, most people tend and some jurisdictions require that you put statement of special inspections on the drawings. It's got to be in the contract documents. It's got to be submitted for the building permit. Um, drawings are preferred, but they're going to go through some other options for you. Then, then uh, anchorage and bracing comes into play quite a bit because of your special inspection requirements for anchorage. There are several construction impacts. You've got to educate contractors usually. And then the contractor still should be held responsible for his QC. This is not replacing it, and we're doing it for him. I'm going to show you how those two come together. So we're going to spend some time on the technical issues, but we're going to spend a lot of time on on what you need to put in place to, to get to the technical issues. So it's much easier if you're doing this, if you're in a multidiscipline firm where you can walk down the hall and gather up all your team. It's a little harder if you're not the prime consultant as a structural engineer, which is quite common. And so you've got to still herd people and educate your architect or owner on how, how to do that. And then um, if you have lots and lots of subconsultants to deal with, you, there's a lot of you start early on your herding mechanisms uh, to get people to know what they're what you need from them as a structural engineer in order to put this statement of special inspections together. So be careful what you ask for. Um, if you do, I'm going to show you a full blown, 100% compliant um, statement of special inspection plans. Now, not every jurisdiction, agency having jurisdiction, permitting agency, expects that or even knows about that or knows how to do it. So um, in a large firm like I work for, we're just going to do it. Um, we're going to be code compliant 100%. And if you're not 
going to be expected to do that because your jurisdiction has no idea what to do with it. You're going to have to balance that out a little bit. 